seven types of toxic narcissists today at queenbeing.com. There's a whole spectrum of narcissism, beginning with the healthy kind that looks a lot like self-esteem and also coexists with empathy and rounding out with the most toxic types of the extreme narcissist. Often, those who would be diagnosed with NPD, but who aren't because they don't think there's anything wrong with them, are the worst. And many times we see some predictable patterns among them. With that being said, there are a number of ways that these behaviors and toxic patterns can manifest themselves in people. So while it might seem logical to assume that all narcissists are exactly alike, since their behaviors seem so similar, they can sometimes slip by even the most trained eye. And that's because there are various personality types within the so-called spectrum of toxic narcissism. Today, I'm going to define five primary types for you, but please note that just like the rest of humanity, no two narcissists are exactly alike, so yours may encompass one or more of these qualities. Let's do this. Seven types of toxic narcissists. Number one, the know-it-all. While the know-it-all narcissist might really know a lot, she's also very pushy with her opinion, which of course she's all too happy to shell out no matter if she's been asked for it or not. This narcissist will lecture you all day long, and as long as you don't expect to actually have a two-way conversation, everything will be just fine. But don't expect her to listen to you because while she might be quiet while you're talking, she's just thinking of the, what she's going to say next. She's not really listening. So how do you deal with this person? Well, politely acknowledge her advice, then thank her and go ahead and do whatever you feel is best. Don't take anything too seriously and don't let yourself feel offended by her uppity behavior. Yeah, she does think she's better than you, but in reality, you should probably feel sorry for her. Number two, the daydream believer. I like to call a narcissist who has the whole grandiose thing a daydream believer. And that's because he will almost always see him as someone who matters more than other people. He figures he's important somehow, so he expects other people to recognize that and treat him accordingly. He will always exaggerate his own accomplishments and he loves to think people are envying and admiring him. He believes that he is meant for something big and if these qualities are combined with a certain amount of charisma and a strong sense of ambition, he may actually succeed on some level. And you might find yourself very drawn to him. So how do you deal with this guy? Well, the daydream believer might bring out your sense of competition and or justice, but don't let yourself get caught up in it. If you do, he will just increase his desire to be better than you and reach his effort, you know, and reach his efforts out toward that to match. So don't let yourself be too affected by his charms. They will very quickly drop once he's got you in your clutch once he's got you in his clutches, and remember that he won't do anything to help you unless there's something in it for him. So don't allow yourself to be dependent on him if you can avoid it. This guy will discard you like last year's pumps and without a second thought. Number three, the seductor or the seductress. I'm gonna stick with the, the feminine form here from this point forward, but please note that this can manifest in males as well. Uh, this is a very different type of narcissist. The seductress is the type of person who makes you feel amazing about yourself at first. She seems to admire you, maybe even idealize you. The seductress will make you feel like you're someone important, someone special who matters. But the dark side of this person is that her intent is to seduce you into feeling that way about her. It's not really about you. She knows that when you love her, and even if you depend on her a little bit, you will support her. You will grow to admire her. You will use blatant, she will use blatant admiration, physical affection, sex, even flattery to get what she wants. But once you're no longer useful to her, she will drop you like a hot rock. So how do you deal with this person? Well, you enjoy the flattery, first of all, if you need to, and and but but know what she really is. Uh, don't allow yourself to be swayed by the seductress, even if it feels really good at first. Keep your eye on how she treats the people around her, such as those she might feel competitive with or those who she feels she's better than. And I bet that you'll find that watching them uh, and the ways that she treats them can kind of give you an idea of what you might be looking forward to in the future. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So listen to how she talks about her exes. If she swears they're all crazy, stalkers, or evil, there's probably something to be concerned about. Narcissists are great at victim playing and they use it to get what they want. And this especially is the case with the seductress. Number four, the bully. 
You know the bully, right? He's that kid that beat you up after school in third grade, all grown up. Or he might look a lot like the mean girl from high school. Or the jock that gave everybody wedgies when he felt a little saucy. Now, as an adult, he may look a little bit more like a regular person. But he needs to elevate himself by humiliating, by humiliating others and making them feel bad about themselves. So, he might also be the daydream believer or know-it-all type, but he's also something else. A big jerk. Yeah, I said it. The bully's going to treat people around him with disdain and contempt, and that's especially the case when he doesn't get what he wants. But he's not nice about it when he asserts his superiority, which of course is as often as possible. He needs you to feel bad about yourself because that's the only thing that helps his ridiculously low self-esteem feel less painful. Of course, he would never admit this, not even to himself. Where the seductress will use sex and her charms to get what she wants from you, the bully will do it a different way. He'll push you, he'll pressure you, and he'll downright threaten you to get what he wants. Now, in extreme cases, he may even threaten or actually use physical harm if you refuse to comply. He will relentlessly mock you and belittle you to the point that you might start thinking that you're not even worth the oxygen you're allowed to breathe. And he'll do a number on your self-esteem. How do you deal with the bully? If you're not in a position to go no, no contact, which is obviously an ideal solution, then your best bet is to shine this guy on. Don't do anything that would injure his ginormous ego and don't directly challenge him. If you're going to withstand this guy's attacks, you need to know how to be very strong in your sense of self-esteem and you need to know that you don't require validation from anyone outside of yourself. So if you've got a bullying narcissist that you're dealing with on the regular, then get, work, get to work on that poker face and practice the great rock technique. Uh, you can learn about that at queenbeing.com, by the way. Just be careful to take care of yourself and don't end up dissociating. Number five, the evil one. All right, so the bully, the bullying narcissist up to this point has really been the most toxic that we've talked about, but this guy, number five, is the pinnacle of our all narcissists. I call him the evil narcissist, and this one's when you could avoid at all costs. Uh, the evil narcissist is a whole other kind of animal. While she may have qualities of all narcissists, as we have mentioned so far, especially the bullying narcissist, the evil one will literally attempt to destroy you. I mean destroy you if you somehow pose a threat to her. Maybe you made her feel like you were challenging her somehow, or you were succeeding in some way she wasn't, or she's threatened by you because you're cuter than her, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Even if you're never made aware of her feelings, I guarantee you that if she's got you in her target, uh, you know, she may proceed to methodically and intentionally try to ruin your life. She'll spread lies to everyone you know. She might even cause trouble for you at work. Uh, if you've been married to her or you, and you have kids together and or you have kids together, she'll do anything she can to turn the children away from you and keep them from you if she wants to. Or on the flip side of that, she may just walk away, walk away and, and never even think about them again because, of course, she doesn't consider people to be human or on the same level as her anyway. Uh, so how do you deal with a with an evil narcissist? Well, obviously, the first step is if you can, get away as quickly as possible. Uh, if the evil narcissist... Um, is there, you know, you just need to know it, that the person is evil, uh, so to speak, uh, and that they are not capable of a healthy relationship of any sort. So the longer you stick around, the higher chances are of becoming sort of a casualty and uh, of, of this narcissist and having your life completely ruined can actually go. So a scary thing about this evil narcissist is that she's a better actor than the most of them. And so a lot of people in her life will have no idea that she is actually who she is behind closed doors. So this might even include her own family members. And these people might be used as flying monkeys, so heads up. Now important, uh, an important note to add here is that in the case of the evil narcissist, you really, really cannot be too careful when it comes to the legalities of it all. So you need to keep copies of toxic emails, texts, and other kinds of communication. And keep in touch with anyone who might have seen the narcissistic behavior in action uh, because you may need them to make a statement on your behalf if one causes any legal, you know, if this one causes any legal problems in your life. Now listen up, don't be afraid to lawyer up and early if you need to. Number six, the addict. The addict narcissist is exactly what he sounds like. He uses drugs, alcohol, gambling, food, sex, fantasy, or whatever else he finds pleasurable to find his, his source of happiness. This kind of narcissist will often encompass other qualities as we've mentioned so far, but not always. And sometimes they're just pretty much openly selfish, while other times they're willing to steal from, trick, or otherwise scam people who love them just so they can get their drug of choice. 
This is a dangerous narcissist because the edict often deals with dangerous people and because he doesn't care if you um, get your rent paid. He doesn't care if you feed your kid. He'll steer, steal your last dollar if it means getting a fix of whatever makes him feel good. How do you deal with this guy? Oh, you watch your back. And you certainly do not give him the, even the illusion of trust. If you can, you're going to want to go no contact and you're going to want to do it fast. There is almost no fixing the addict unless he actually manages to work on recovery and get some serious therapy. It's unlikely. I'm going to be really straight with you. Now, if you're co-parenting with an addict, this is the time that you really need to get a hold of yourself and keep records. Document everything that happens uh, and make sure that you take care of yourself in the meantime. So get some counseling and some legal representation while you're at it. You need to protect yourself and your children. Number seven, the victim. The victim is also called the covert narcissist. He's a master manipulator, uh, but it differs the, from the way that other narcissists tend to work because this guy, he's kind of an introvert. Uh, he loves the poor me game, but um, sadly for this guy, he it all comes down to one thing. This the, the, the victim narcissist actually hates himself. He really believes that it's going to be possible to hate himself better somehow. Now, while he continues to demonstrate the behavior that he clearly loathes about himself, the covert narcissist is powerless to control his thoughts, at least as far as he's concerned. His deep inner conscience is not okay with the person he is or the person he has become. So he judges himself way more harshly than he judges anyone else, um, and, and more harshly than anyone judges him, for that matter. But, of course, what he has is... is a high standard for his life and while he quietly sticks to this unreasonable standard to the best of his abilities he's very happy to secretly look down his nose at the people that he deems lesser than himself so how do you deal with this guy well as with any narcissist watch your back and go no contact if possible however uh, be prepared to to fully ignore this guy ignore the quietly judgmental gaze and superiorist attitude that is directed at you and then you know just keep doing what you do if you don't feed his supply like the rest he may just get bored and move on. Do you recognize someone you know in these types of narcissists? Share your thoughts and comments in the section below. Now that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. This is Angie Atkinson and I'm a certified life coach, an author, and a survivor of narcissistic abuse in relationships. You can get free resources for victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse at queenbeing.com and or get personalized narcissism and abuse recovery support at NarcissismSupportCoach.com. Uh, you can also check out my books at booksangiewrote.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.